So good evening, guys. Welcome to day one of uh, basic to advanced level performance testing using uh, JMeter, NeoLoad, and LoadRunner tools. So as I mentioned, like uh, this is going to be the day one session. So wherein we are going to learn the basics of uh, performance testing. So basics of performance testing is common for all the three tools. Okay. So what is performance testing and why we need to do the performance testing, right? So these uh, these particular uh, concepts are very common for uh, all the tools. So uh, there won't be any tool-wise separation over here for these particular concepts especially, right? There are a lot more concepts uh, which are common for uh, both the tools, okay? So again, like we'll discuss uh, going forward, uh, we'll discuss more on those uh, uh, topics also, right? So in uh, as per today's uh, session, right? Uh, like uh, I'll start with uh, overview of yesterday's session, right? On a high level, like uh, yesterday we discussed about uh, uh, how the project is going to start, right? And uh, how the development team is going to develop the process based on the documents. Again, once after the development is done in the development environment, right? So the code is going to be deployed in the form of a build in test environment. And once the test environment uh, is set up and everything is done, testing team is going to come into the picture and they are going to perform three different types of tests, right? So again, software testing uh, mainly divided into three different types. One is functional testing. Another one is non-functional testing. And the third one is maintenance testing. So we discussed about these three types of testings in yesterday's session, right? So uh, we need to understand like uh, some basics of functional testing Right. We need to know what is uh, unit testing, what is smoke testing on a high level. Uh, with that, we'll jump into what is non-functional testing and especially what is performance testing in that. Finally, uh, if time permits, after uh, like uh, we'll we'll see what exactly the maintenance testing also on a high level. Okay. So uh, I'll start with like what are all the different types of uh, functional testings. Uh, that are available and we'll try to get some information of what exactly each and every type of testing is going to do. Okay. So first of all, what is functional testing? We already discussed functional testing is nothing but testing the functionality of the application, right? I know like uh, you guys are already aware of this most probably, right? If you guys are aware of that, then still fine, right? Please go through uh, this session also. Maybe it will be helpful uh, to get some points okay or at, at least it will be like a recap for you okay so uh, functional testing is nothing but again uh, testing the functionality of the application so we already discussed by uh, the help of one particular application right so in each and every application there are going to be different different functionalities so like uh, login functionality cart functionality right uh, again uh, registering register functionality like registering the account functionality right different types of uh, functionalities will be there testing each and every functionality okay will come under the functional testing here right so under the functional testing again different types of testings are going to be performed uh, under this functional testing so the first type of testing that we need to know is the unit testing so what is meant by unit testing is nothing but so the whole the whole project right the whole application is going to be divided into different individual units so let us say we have one flipkart application right so in flipkart application we have different different functionalities as i mentioned login is one functionality registering uh, into the application is one functionality so like that different different functionalities are there right so each and every functionality we are going to consider uh, consider as an individual unit Okay, so here uh, we are going to test the each and every functionality of an uh, application here, like individual units wise, we are going to test it. So that type of testing, we are going to call it as the unit testing. Okay, <clears throat> so generally this unit testing is going to be done by the development team. So we are not like, again, functional testing team, uh, they will also perform until and unless if a development team is not going to do that, but most of the times, development teams will do this unit testing, right? So once the unit testing is done, they'll go with the integration testing, right? So what is meant by integration testing is nothing but, so integration testing in a simple way is nothing but, let us take, we have uh, one 
a registration scenario right wherein the user is going to register into the application right generally once the user got uh, registered into the application what he is going to do he is going to log in into the application okay so the same process right uh, whoever the registered user is there so that particular user should log in properly that is what the intention so what we are going to do here is we are going to combine those individual units like uh, registering is one particular individual unit as well as this uh, login part is some other individual unit. So here we are going to combine those two units and we are going to test it as a group. So that type of testing we are going to call it as the integration testing. here. Okay, coming to the next one system testing. Right. So system testing is nothing but we are going to test, okay, the complete fully integrated software product. So that testing, we are going to call it as the system testing. One, once all the functionalities are completely developed, right, then we are going to test the completely uh, integrated software product, right. That type of testing, we are going to call it as a system testing. Yeah. And the next one that we need to know is the interface testing. So interface testing is nothing but again, two different software components, right? If we are going to uh, verify, right? If you are going to test two different software components, right? In terms of how they are communicating with each other, that kind of testing, we are going to call it as the interface testing. Can anyone uh, give uh, one example of the interface testing? Which, uh, like, which type of example that we can give for interface testing? Any suggestions? Yeah. Yes, please be interactive. So for unit testing, integration testing, system testing, I have given you some uh, examples, right? In the same way, can any one of you give some example for this interface testing? Then two different software systems. Right, are going to be tested in terms of how they are communicating with each other. Anyone? Someone is trying to answer. I think someone is unmuted themselves. No? So on a high level, right, I can say uh, Flipkart application right uh, so is one particular application and at the end of the flipkart like uh, at the end of one particular flow in the flipkart application for example we are tr i am trying to purchase one particular product from flipkart application so what i will do i'll search for the product right and i'll add that par uh, particular product to the cart right and once adding that uh, product to the cart i'll go to the checkout page and i will start doing the payment process right so till this payment process, right, what is happening, whatever the process or whatever the steps that I have done is completely related to the Flipkart application, right? And their software systems are going to be there, right? But when, once if I jump into the payment process, there some third party software is going to come into the picture, right? Payment gateway software is going to come into the picture, right? Now what will happen? I need to enter my credit card details or debit card details in that particular payment gateway uh, software so that it is going to be verified, right? It is going to verify our data. And once everything is good, that payment gateway process will process our payment, right? And the payment is going to be done, right? Here, two different softwares we are combinedly uh, testing here and in terms of its communication, right? So in terms of its communication, we are testing here two different softwares, right? So that type of testing, I can say it as interface testing here, right? So interface testing is nothing but testing two different software systems, right? In terms of communication, integration testing is nothing but testing two different un individual units when we are going to combine them, how it is going to work, right? So that is what the difference between the interface testing as well as integration testing on a high level, right? Knowing these things uh, is going to be for sure helpful uh, for you uh, like anywhere, but just having some idea is always better, right? So even if you are not going to use that, just uh, you, if you know that that is 
always better, right? So that is the reason why I'm just covering these points here. So coming to the next type of uh, testing, right? That next type of functional testing, that is nothing but the regression testing, okay? So this is very, very important testing. Even like uh, not only the functional testing team, even performance testing team also is going to perform this regression testing, right? So regression testing is nothing but rerunning the functional and non-functional test to ensure that previously developed and tested software still performs after a change. So let us say we have uh, some register page, okay, wherein the user is going to register into the application. And we have one login page wherein the user is going to log in with the registered account, right? So previously, right, we don't have this uh, uh, like uh, change password or forgot password option in the login page. But they developed that new feature in the login page and they added that new feature in the login page, right? So because of this newly introduced feature, right? So whether any issues are arising in the previously developed and tested software, right? So that particular uh, thing we need to identify. How we are going to identify is nothing but by running the regression testing, right? So if we do the regression testing, obviously we'll come to a conclusion that, right? Okay, if uh, some issues are arising, whether that issue is maybe because of this newly introduced software or not, right? So combinedly, we are going to test all the individual units again here also in terms of a product, right? Complete product. And finally, we are going to identify whether this newly developed feature is going to have some impact on the other or not, other functionalities or not, right? So that type of testing, we are going to call it as the regression testing. And finally, the one user acceptance testing, that is the UAT, right? So this UAT part already we discussed in last session, but on a high level, right? UAT is nothing but user acceptance testing. So wherein we are going to test the application in front of the user, okay? In front of the user, we are going to test the, in front of the client, okay? In front of the user in the sense, in front of the client, we are going to test the application Okay, and we are going to verify whether each and every functionality of the application is properly working or not, right? So that type of testing, we are going to call it as the user acceptance testing, right? So hope uh, these different types of uh, functional testings are clear. Any doubts, please feel free to ask. As I always mentioned, uh, please feel free to stop me, okay, if you have any doubts. If at all, if you are not asking any doubts, I'm just going to assume that, okay, till this part, it is clear. Okay, so I hope like uh, these points are clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go ahead. So can you always tell me what is the interface testing? Interface testing, right? Yeah, right. So interface testing is nothing but uh, we are going to test two different software systems in terms of its communication, how they are communicating with each other. I took an example of the uh, like uh, payment page, right? So whenever if you are doing some payment, okay, there is some uh, third party company uh, software we need to use it, right? Payment gateway process is a third party company software that we need to use it, right? So that is a different software and our application is going to be a different software, right? So when these two different softwares are integrated with each other, right? Or uh, how they are communicating with each other, okay? That type of testing, right? We are going to call it as the interface testing. You got clarity on this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. right? So these are all the different types of functional testings that uh, the functional testing team is going to perform. Okay, so with this basic idea, we'll, we'll jump into the main concept that is the, what is performance testing? Okay, so one second guys, someone is joining. So we already discussed like what is performance testing in yesterday's session, but again, right? So performance testing is nothing but on a high level, right? So we are going to putting, we are going to put some user load on the application, right? On the application means on the application servers, right? So let us say we are going to have one server, okay? 
uh, wherein we are going to deploy our application right and that particular application on that particular application we are going to send some request right uh, like different users are going to access that application and they are going to send some request to the server right what server will do is it will understand the request process the request and finally the server is going to send the response back right so sending the request is nothing but simply opening the browser and typing like www.flipkart.com and press enter right once if you press enter your request is going to send to the server right so getting the response back from the server is nothing but again right we are going to see one proper flipkart a user interface page right in your browser right so that is nothing but your you got some response from the server that response you are seeing on the browser properly right and what the server will do is it will process that request that means whatever the request that we made okay based on that particular request the same requested page response is going to be selected and it is going to be provided to the end user right so that is what the server will do right now what we are going to do here in terms of performance testing is nothing but we are going to put some more users okay onto this particular application and we are going to test how the application performance is when we are having more number of users on the application in terms of the response times like right? when more number of users are accessing the application obviously the response times are going to increase response time here is nothing but loading the page right loading the requested page or getting the response from the server is going to take much time right so that particular response time is going to be increased right so if response time is increasing obviously i can say that that particular application performance is not good and also why this is going to happen why the response times are going to increase means because of the server got overburdened so when more number of requests are going to send to the server the server got overburdened and it is unable to process those many requests so obviously the server cpu memory utilizations are going to increase because of that it will affect it will uh, increase there will be some increase in the response times so that is what we are going to verify here by doing the performance testing we need to monitor all these things how the response times are how the cpu utilization how the memory disk network utilizations are right and there are many other metrics that we are going to look into so slowly we'll jump into those metrics also but on a high level this is what the performance testing is right and who is going to perform this performance testing process obviously qa team right quality assurance team is going to do that okay and what exactly is the uh, major agenda of doing this performance testing is nothing but we need to identify the performance bottlenecks that is the major agenda of doing the performance testing so whenever if there are some issues that are there then only your system or your application will behave in a odd way right that kind of issues why that issue got arised right so where that issue is there right so that kind of issues we need to identify so those issues we are going to call it as the performance bottlenecks so this is what the performance testing is and we need to understand more clearly what are bottlenecks with some examples right so let's jump into what are bottlenecks right we'll we'll see what are bottlenecks bottlenecks are nothing but individual points that limits an application performance so bottlenecks are those individual points which are going to limit the application performance so generally right high response times right so that is one bottleneck why we are getting some high response times so that we need to identify slow uh, query uh, uh, response right so timeouts as well as uh, uh, like uh, uh, cpu high utilization memory high utilization right these are all different different kinds of bottlenecks that way that we may come across while doing the performance testing right we need to understand why those issues are going to come and we need to provide some solution for that that is what our work is 
So generally, right, most of the performance bottlenecks are going to arise because of the inappropriate architecture. So if your application architecture is not appropriate, right, not appropriate, then obviously you're going to get this issue. That means if your server capacity is not up to the extent, right? So if you are uh, choosing uh, a different, like uh, if you are choosing a different architecture, right, which is going to uh, take much time to execute uh, the requ that particular request, then obviously that is not feasible, thing, right? So inappropriate architecture, right? Application architecture, if it is not proper, then there are chances that you may see this performance bottlenecks. And another option thing, another uh, ish, major thing is poor hardware choices. So let us say if you are having uh, a server which is having very less hardware configuration. That means you have some 3 GB RAM, okay, and some uh, 50 GB hard disk, something like that, right? So if you are going to have very uh, like poor hardware choices, okay, very less RAM size, very less uh, uh, processor size, right, those kind of things then obviously there are chances that you may see performance bottlenecks here, right? And also one more major thing is faulty code implementations, okay? So what will happen is sometimes, okay, the code may not work properly, okay? They may implement some faulty code, okay? Or they may implement uh, some code which is going to consume or which is going to run, okay, more number of uh, lines, Right. So, for example, if a junior developer is going to develop one particular code, okay, he may write the code in uh, 10 lines or 15 lines. But if the same code is going to be developed by the senior developer, obviously, uh, he that code number of lines of code is going to be reduced to four or five. Right. So, executing like uh, four or five lines of code, okay, and executing 10 lines of code will obviously vary, right? I'm just giving you as an example here, five and 10 as the count, right? But it won't be like that, obviously, in real time. So, but I'm just uh, uh, giving you this identity, uh, like uh, this as an example for your basic understanding purpose, right? And sometimes uh, there may there may be chances, like uh, if we are adding some items to the cart, right? Maybe uh, because of the faulty code, it is not going to add that item to the cart, right? So those kind of issues are also going to be there. Right. So these are the major uh, chances. Okay. Because of these things, we are going to see the bottlenecks in our application. Right. On a high level, this is uh, this is what the bottlenecks are, and there are uh, like why we may see those bottlenecks. Right. Again, how to identify that? We'll see like with the help of the Dynatrace. Uh, once if we like that is at the completely end of this particular trial. Right? Why? Because we'll go in a step-by-step -step process, as I mentioned. So at the complete end of this particular training sessions, you are going to see this uh, bottleneck identification part and everything. Okay. So hope this uh, bottlenecks are clear, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let me move to the next slide, right? So we need to understand the objective, right? The objective here again, like uh, this may be one of the interview question also, right? So you can uh, use these terminologies, whatever that I mentioned over here, right? It is al always better to use the proper terminologies that the performance testers are going to use, right? So the main objective of performance testing is to test whether the application under test, right? AUT, AUT is nothing but application under test. If you are testing the Flipkart application, your uh, Flipkart is the a Flipkart Flipkart application is the AUT for you, right? So what we need to do is the main objective of performance testing is to test the AUT application under test, right? Whether it is meeting the following expected requirements in production-like environment. So what is the meaning of production-like environment? Those who attended yesterday's session. Can you guys tell me what is production like environment? Stage. Stage environment or testing environment based on the company, right? If some companies may have testing and uh, like a uh, testing environment only, some companies may have stage environment too, right? So based on their thing, right? 
So any lower environment, okay, like test environment or stage environment, we can call it as the production-like environment. So we can use that, right? So in the production-like environment, we are going to deploy the application under test and we are going to pass, right? Or we are going to test that application with virtual user load, right? Virtual user load are nothing but tool generated users. Virtual users are nothing but tool generated users, right? So with the help of different performance testing tools like LoadRunner, JMeter and NeoLoad, what we are going to do here is we are going to create some virtual users and those virtual users are going to send requests to the servers which are in production like environment, right? And once if the requests are sending to the server, obviously we are going to get the response back and at that time, right, uh, whether that particular response is meeting the required NFRs or not. NFRs means non-functional requirements or not. Whether that response is meeting this NFRs or not, as well as SLS. SLS means service level agreement. So, for example, right, so I'm just loading one particular page, right? So the client expectation is uh, that page should load within five seconds is what the client expectation, right? So that is what the SLA is. SLA here is nothing but service level agreement, okay, wherein the client is going to give his uh, expectation, okay, like this page should load uh, like within five seconds, this page should load uh, within 10 seconds, something like that, right? So those kind of SLAs, we are going to get it from the client and our intention is at the end of the test, we need to verify it whether we are meeting these SLAs or not, right? If we are meeting these SLAs and if we are meeting these non-functional requirements, then we are good with this. So that is what the whole objective of doing the performance testing. Hope it is clear uh, for you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we say NFR is an SLAs are same or? Again, right, and multiple requirements are going to be there. In that SLA is one particular kind of requirement. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll discuss okay. more. It can be a, only a company will say the uh, response time that... Particular. Not only response time, uh, we can take error percentage. Like for each and everything, if some criteria is going to be set by the client, right, that particular thing, we are going to call it as an SLA. Okay. Apart from that, there will be many other requirements that we will uh, that I will cover uh, while we are going to discuss this performance testing life cycle. I'll show you one real time document like uh, what are all the questions that we are going to ask the client. Okay, in the NFR gathering stage, right? So this uh, NFR stage is completely a separate stage where we are going to gather some requirements from the client. Okay, so those questions, how we are going to frame those questions and in which particular format we are going to share our questionnaire to the client, right? And uh, how the client is going to fill those things. I'll show you uh, with a practical document so that you'll get some clarity. But as of now, you can assume like this SLA is a part of this NFR gathering. That's it. Okay, so... This is the major objective of performance testing. Okay. So with this basic idea, uh, like uh, we need to, uh, like by now, right, we already discussed more on this performance testing. So why performance testing is required means obviously, right, we are not going to allow slow run times, right, we are not going to get, uh, show interest when we are uh, accessing that particular site, which is having the prolonged response times, right. If the application is very uh, poor in scale in terms of scalability, then we can't go with those kind of applications, right? So in a simple nutshell, I can tell you one example. The, the first Flipkart big billion day sale, okay, in India, uh, like if you remember or not, I don't know, but the first Flipkart big billion day sale uh, is a failure in India. The reason is they expected some X uh, load, right? But they got some 10x load on the on their servers right in india obviously 
uh, whenever if there is offer, everyone is going to visit that application, right? The same thing happened in the first Flipkart big billion day sale also. And because of that, their servers are crashed, right? And they have seen like a uh, huge loss, okay? Uh, and in terms of the orders, okay, orders booking and everything. So again, this particular thing is not only related to e-commerce domain, it will be there in each and every domain wherever more number of users are accessing the application. If you take insurance domain or if you take banking domain, right? Any domain, okay? If you take like where more number of users are accessing the application, there the performance testing for those kind of applications are very much required, okay? So in order to avoid the huge losses, okay, in terms of revenue, they'll simply go for this performance testing, right? I don't want to discuss again the theory part which I'm showing over here. But on a high level, I can tell like this. Okay. So that is why the performance testing is required. In order to avoid these things, the performance testing is required for us. Right. So till now, till now, whatever that we discussed is completely related to the performance testing. Right. But in each and every time, right, in each and every slide, almost all if you see, okay, there is one term called response time. Okay, there is one term called response time, which we are keep on discussing in each and every uh, page almost, all, right? So what are, what what is, what exactly are the response times? Can anyone define uh, what is a response time? Guys, what is response time? Can anyone define what is response time? Please, even though if it is wrong, that is fine. Obviously, you guys are already working, so it won't be wrong for sure. Whatever the response time that you guys uh, define, right, in your way, you can define it just uh, to make it more interactive. I just need some information. Yeah. It is the time that is uh, replies to the request, basically. Uh, it is the time taken uh, for the request to get the response, right? Yes. Okay. Any other uh, definitions? Gopi, Kumar, Ravi, Imran. Any other definitions that we can give? Uh, you're breaking Gopi, I think. Okay, no worries. Okay. Uh, time taken to complete one request. It's the total time taken to complete one request, right? But we yeah. need to know what exactly, like how this particular response time is again subdivided here. Okay. So the how... client will hit the server, uh, web server. Mm -hmm. So it will process the request in application server. Mm -hmm. So it will get uh, the response will be stored in database server. Again, the response will be get back from DB to app server, app server to the web server, web server to client. Yeah, that is completely the flow of architecture. Uh, but what my intention here is we need to understand a term called full page, sorry, full page response time. Okay, we need to understand the concept called full page response time. Okay, so whenever if you are going to send the request to the server, you are going to get the response back at the same time, right? So that is nothing but your full page response time, right? So you are sending some request and your page is completely loading on your browser. That is nothing but your full page response time. But my intention in this particular session is to discuss how that full page response time is subdivided here. How many of you aware of uh, the points which I mentioned over here, guys, in this particular uh, PPT? How many of you have idea on this DNS lookup, connect, redirect, first byte, content download, DOM, DOM content loaded, page load, on load, these things? How many of you have some idea on this? On a high level also, that is fine. Yeah, I have some idea on this. Yeah. So generally, right, what will happen whenever if you are sending one request to the server, right? So first what it will do, right? How the response time is going to be calculated, how the full page response time is going to be calculated. There is a difference between the response time definition as well as the full page response time definition. 
okay this dif this particular difference we need to understand and how the response complete like how the response time is going to be calculated and what are all the sub time calculations that are going to be happen okay in the response time okay and at the same time how the full page response time is going to be calculated that we need to know right so we are going to discuss that part right now okay so whenever if you are going to uh, hit the server right whenever if you are going to send the request to the server generally what you will do you will send the request in the form of a url right so in the form of an url you are going to send the request obviously like www.flipkart.com right but how that particular request will go and hit that flipkart server directly so what happens back end it is pointed to some ip address and port number yes back end on the back end what it will do is it will uh, it will be appended with some ip address as well as some port number right so generally for each and every machine if you take your laptop also for your laptop if you are having some internet connectivity obviously you are going to get one ip address for that for your laptop you will get one ip for sure right so that ip will represent your machine right so what will happen here is your flipkart company they won't uh, show that ip outside ip address details outside as well as the port details outside why because there are more chances of getting hacked easily if you are going to display your ip address as well as port number outside to the entire world so that is the reason why what they will do is they will add one domain name to that particular ip address as well as the port number they will give one domain name to one to that particular uh, uh, ip address as well as port number so where that domain is domain name is going to be allocated or where that domain name is going to be scheduled is nothing but in the dns lookup so once if you hit like www.flipkart.com your request will go and hit this dns lookup right so what this dns lookup will do is for that particular domain name so what is the ip address and what is the port number right so it is going to fetch that particular thing right your dns lookup will fetch that particular thing right dns means domain name server right our domain name system right you can call it this so what it will do is it will simply fetch the ip address as well as the port number of your server based on the domain name right so in order to fetch that particular ip address and domain name sorry ip address and uh, port number okay for the specified domain name how much time it has taken that time we are going to call it as the dns lookup time okay so dns lookup time is nothing but so every request will start with a dns lookup getting the ip address from the domain name right how much time it has taken to fetch that ip address based on the domain name is nothing but that time we are going to call it as the dns lookup time here so first the dns lookup time is very very important so next part is the connect right so what is meant by connect time right again everything is a time dns lookup time connect time redirect time okay time to first byte content download time right everything is a time in terms of time only here right so what is meant by connect time that we need to know so connect time is nothing but it is the time taken to establish a connection to your web server after the dns lookup right so once the ip address got fetched right once your web server ip address got fetched then how long it has taken to connect to that particular ip address after the dns lookup is happened so that time we are going to call it as the connect time okay so the next time that we need to know about is the redirect time right so you need to understand this redirection process okay first of all so what is redirection process is nothing but i'll take one simple example so uh, let us say i am doing some business okay i have i'm having one uh, general store uh, in road number 4 kukatpally right now what will happen uh, because of some high rents over there okay i got uh, one more place okay in road number 3 okay with less rent rental uh, thing over there so what i'll do generally i'll 
move my shop from road number four to road number three, okay, because of the rent issue. So what I will generally do over there is in my road number four shop, okay, in my old shop, in front of old shop at least, I'm going to put one uh, message, okay, informing my uh, vendors, are like informing my uh, clients, okay, I can say my clients, right? Informing my clients that, okay, the shop is moved to so-and-so place, right? So what will happen because of that is nothing but my customers who are trying to purchase items from my shop, okay, if they are going to the old place also, they will automatically going to redirect to the new place, right? So that is what the redirection is here, right? So whenever if you are trying to access the old application URL, like, then automatically it should redirect you to the new application URL. So this kind of uh, redirection, okay, will also take some time, right? So that is nothing but your redirect time, right? So it shows how long it takes to follow all the redirects to get the final URL. The final URL here is nothing but the updated current URL, okay? Updated current URL. So how long it has taken to do all the redirects to get the final URL. That time we are going to call it as the redirect time. Okay. So once if you click the request, these will happen internally. These are all the things. Okay. These are all the time, different time spans, which are going to be gathered internally here. Right. So once the redirect time got uh, gathered here, then it will look for the first byte. Okay, so what is the meaning of first byte here? Is nothing but it is the time spent waiting for the first byte of response from the server. Okay, so whenever if you are sending some request to the server, if you are simply seeing the blank page, okay, if you are not even getting some response from the server, right, then obviously we'll, we'll be like, uh, Are, why I just uh, choose this particular site? Why can't I move to the another side, right? This is what our inner feeling is going to be, right? So because of that, what will happen in order to avoid that kind of situation, generally this uh, development teams, what they will do is they will show some sort of color, okay? Uh, which indicates that, okay, you're going to get the response within few seconds, right? So that sort of color, whatever that we are going to see, we are going to call it as the, time taken to first paint, okay? So whenever if you are going to see some sort of color, right? So that color is nothing but some sort of uh, paint or some sort of uh, content you are going to see it, right? So at least that time, if you are going to uh, see that sort of uh, content over there, you will wait for some time, okay? Yeah, thinking that, okay, this, is a, uh, this site is getting loaded, so I just need to wait, right? In the same way, whenever if you are requesting something to the server, right, how long, right, it has taken to send the first byte of response, okay, from the server. So that time, we are going to call it as the time to first byte. So obviously, this time to first byte should be as less as possible, right? It should be in microseconds, right? If this time to first byte is going to be in microseconds, then everything uh, your site uh, response will be very, very good and your site performance is going to be very, very good, right? If this particular time taken to first byte is going to be very high, then your performance of the application, of that specific application is too bad, okay? You can see this first byte time and you can tell directly that your application performance is good or bad, okay? So this is what the first byte is. And the next one that we need to know is the content download. Okay. So what is this content download is nothing but it is the time spent receiving the response data, right? So whenever if you are loading any application, right? Whenever if you are sending any request to the server, the first thing that it will load here is nothing but your HTML page, right? Most of you uh, know this HTML, right? hypertext markup language, right? Every website, almost all, they will use this HTML format only, right? So uh, this, in each and every application, whenever if you are hitting one specific page, that page is going to be in the HTML format. Again, to that HTML page, 
again uh, images okay css files javascript files right uh, many other uh, additional uh, apis right those are going to be added to that html page for sure right so in order to load this html page right after getting the first byte of response till that entire html page is going to be loaded right which which is irrespective of the images javascript files CS file, css files and other things only how long it has taken to load that particular html page once after getting the first byte so that time we are going to call it as the content download time right so if you add all these times like the dns lookup time connect time redirect time first byte time content download time then you are going to get the response time so response time here is nothing but it is the total time when the request is initiated until the pages HTML code has been downloaded. Okay. So till that HTML code is going to download right from the initiation of page, whatever the time it has taken, that time we are going to call it as the response time. Okay. But what about this full page response time that we need to understand, right? So in addition to this response time, some other things will also happen, right? It will also consume time, some time, right? Addition of that time with this response time is going to be your full page response time, right? So till this particular response time part, only your HTML code got downloaded from the server. That's it. You need to remember this, right? So once the HTML code got downloaded from the server, right? What your browser will do is, your browser will immediately trigger this DOM load part, okay? So your browser will immediately do this DOM load, okay? DOM means document object model, right? So whatever the HTML uh, code that it got downloaded from the server, right? So it will arrange that HTML code in the form of a tree structure. Okay, first this particular part of code need to be executed. After that, this, after that, this, right? So in a specific hierarchy format, in a specific tree format, okay, your entire HTML code is going to be arranged, right? How much time it has taken to do that particular arrangement, right? That arrangement, that time we are going to call it as the DOM load time, okay? So DOM load time is nothing but the time from when a request is sent until the browser has downloaded the pages HTML and finished constructing the document object model. That means and finished constructing the tree structure. Okay. And finished constructing the tree structure of that particular HTML code. That means, so first this particular HTML tag should be there. Okay. Inside that, this input tag should be there. Inside that, this button tag should be there. So like that, some tree structure format, okay, uh, code uh, process is going to be arranged in that tree structure format, right? That HTML code is going to be arranged in that tree structure format. That particular time, okay, we are going to call it as the DOM load time, right? So once that HTML code got arranged in the tree structure format, immediately what will happen? The second, the next one, DOM content load. Sorry, the doc here. Uh, just uh, I I forgot to add this uh, DOM content loaded uh, event. Okay, but here we have this DOM content load event, right? So this DOM content loaded event will trigger, right? Once the pages HTML code is arranged in the tree structure, right? Once after completing that, immediately your DOM content loaded event is going to trigger, right? So once this event got triggered, then the next step, right? So what will happen? The next step is page load will trigger, right? The page load uh, process will start, right? Page loading process is nothing but, as I mentioned, in order to uh, load one particular page properly, we need some HTML page as well as images, CSS files, JavaScripts, and many other APIs and those kind of things, right? So this page load time, we are going to call it as the page load time. So what this page load time will do is, this is the time it is going to take, 
okay in order to load all these things like the images css files javascript files and other support files whatever that are required right how long it has taken to load all these things right we are going to call these things as embedded resources are dynamic resources okay remember the term embedded resources are dynamic resources right so how long it has taken to load these resources right is nothing but your page load time right once the page load time is done right once all these uh, resources got downloaded then immediately this onload event will trigger which indicates that the page is going the page is loaded successfully right so finally your full page response time is nothing but it is the combination of your response time as well as your dom content loaded time plus page load time okay all these combinations we are going to call it as the full page response time here right so this is what the full page response hope it is clear any doubts in this please feel free to Any doubts in this? I know like uh, it is somewhat uh, uh, the theory part, right? Uh, again, right? So first four sessions or five sessions are going to be obviously the theory part so that you must know. Then only if you if you know this theory part, then only uh, you can do the performance testing uh, more easily. It's uh, already practically proven. Okay, you can ask any performance tester if you don't know the theory part properly, then you can't apply that uh, while you're working uh, with, a, with any kind of tool, right? Any kind of performance testing tool. Okay. Any doubts here? So if doubts are not there, uh, I just want to close the session here for today. Okay. So I'll again share this particular session in our group uh, shortly. You can go through the session uh, before coming to tomorrow's session. So at least like you'll get a, uh, just try to get a glance of this particular session so that it will be really helpful. Going forward, like uh, in tomorrow's session, I'm going to discuss about uh, developer tools concept which is uh, also one of the important concept that a performance tester should know, okay? So I'll discuss uh, uh, like more points, like in, the, in depth of the developer tools concept that every performance tester should know so that it will be really helpful. Okay, any questions here? Okay. So if questions are not there, uh, that's all for today, guys. Uh, thanks for attending this session. We'll meet again tomorrow.